Hi everybody and welcome along to another edition of the uh, Life Force Patterning Integral Health Radio Shows here with me, Ben Calder. Today we're broadcasting from Centre for Integral Health in Shrewsbury here and uh, today I have with me, I'm lucky enough as my guest to have Amanda Bedding who is an acupuncturist and Chinese uh, herbal medicine specialist member of the British Acupuncture Council, uh, who are a leading body for traditional Chinese medicine practitioners. Uh, she's been in practice since 2003, running a very successful clinic in Bristol, as well as lecturing at some of the leading acupuncture colleges in the UK. Uh, and we're really, really lucky that Amanda is now relocated into Shropshire, where she's in the process of building clinics uh, here in Shrewsbury at the Centre for Integral Health and also at Church Stretton. Uh, so hi, Amanda. Thank you for joining me this morning. Hi Ben, nice to be here. Thank yeah. you for inviting me. No, thank you. Um... Uh, some of you uh, who kind of know me and listen to my work know that I've got a big thing for Chinese medicine anyway uh, you know being a kinesiologist my background is uh, in five element work within uh, within Chinese theories as well uh, and I'm a Qigong practitioner so I love the Chinese stuff but what got you there what what was it about Chinese medicine and acupuncture that kind of drew you in yeah. um, I think I, I'm like many professionals you know and not knowing what is good health and, and not knowing how how I was spending my energy. So working in a very stressful job, deadlines, lots of travel, um, you know, pressure both at home and at work. And one of the things that really got me into Chinese medicine was that I had a bereavement. Mm. Um, quite early on in my life, around about 18, I lost um, a boyfriend to a car crash. Mm. And I didn't do anything about it. I didn't know how to grieve. I didn't know... Um, you know, how to deal with those emotions. There was no framework whatsoever in my family or around me. You know, it was just, you know, we had the funeral and you just get on with it. And, and of course, that emotion just got absolutely buried. And, uh, and on, on top of that, I began self-medicating. Um, you know, my behaviour was a bit wild. Um, and as a result of it, you know, I, I started to damage myself. Um, and it wasn't until sort of 10 years later that a friend of mine was training as an acupuncturist. And um, at the time I was looking to take antidepressants because this, this kind of depression had really gripped hold of me. And she said, come along, you know, come and see what it does for you. And I was, I was absolutely amazed at how I felt when I left there. I felt like I had finally got back in touch with me as though as though I don't know that my soul or spirit had somehow just been tenuously holding on by a thread and now it was I was back in my body and I was I was literally blown away by this and I remember going home and just saying I need to know how this works and and it, of course acupuncture isn't a linear uh, medicine it's holistic or integral so um, the more I read about it the more I didn't know uh, and I got to a point where I just thought, you know, this is, I can really see if I've benefited from this, that I know so many of my friends who are probably in similar situations who would benefit from this. So I, I, I put a plan together, I rented my house, I jacked my job in, I sold all my possessions, uh, and, I, and I got to acupuncture college. And uh, the first week of sitting there, I knew I'd come home. I knew I was absolutely in the right place. Wow. Uh, and I still feel that, you know, I feel so lucky to be doing this amazing job. And for it to have... I mean, I know it sounds quite corny, but literally saved my life. You yeah. know, who who knows where I'd have been if I'd continued with that way of behaving. Yeah. So it's um, it's it's really changed things for me. And I know most students who uh, come to the college that I lecture at have had a profound experience. Um, emotionally or spiritually from acupuncture wow. and and that to me as well listening to your your story of how you got there that seems like actually not not only a really common theme within practitioners mm. that you know in some way life has had significant challenges that we've been at breaking points that we've found something that's brought us back to who we are and, and, and what kind of gives us meaning and purpose in life. But I hear this story so much within my yeah. clients as well. Yeah. And, you know, people who are struggling, people who have got stuff that they haven't dealt with and they just need a little bit of support and yeah. help. And the medicine that comes in at a holistic integral level is able to do far more than just treat a symptom or to, you know, deal with a pain or, you know, the thing that often gets the person to the gate, as it were. It, it, there's a 
great deal of depth beyond that. Uh, absolutely. And I think one of the things that I've really realised and one of the things that I try to encourage a lot of my clients to do is, is that the thought of the pain of going through this change or transformation is is absolutely not painful it's freeing and it's transformative uh, and there is no pain and, and it, we do change but in such a positive way um, and you know I once I touched my grief crikey I was floored for a couple of weeks with crying and, and touching it again but but now I just think of this ex-boyfriend and just kind of go crikey what an amazing man to have met rather than yeah. this you know, kind of continual lump in my throat, or this continual "what if," yeah. um, and uh, that's gone. It's uh, and I know that transforming those stuck emotions is just so important for sure. moving forward. And and also such a departure from the concept that we're given by the conventional viewpoint out there about not only emotions but specifically about grief yeah. that these are things you know we don't talk about death in in a healthy open way we don't uh, look at these things in a way that's going to encourage them to process yeah. and the the harm to our health for that is significant yeah. would you say absolutely i mean the emotions like joy or anger or frustration or worry you know they're every day but grief it, it kind of holds its own space special place really we mm. we generally don't know grief not in certainly in the, the, the UK you know there are loads of people who are struggling on a daily basis in awful situations who are faced with you know terrible situations and and yet you know we might have a pet die or a family member die but it's we need to know how to deal with grief because it's not just about the loss of somebody it's about also how we grieve the loss of parts of ourselves that we no longer need anymore you know it's this con continual transformation and through that and through Chinese medicine as well the most beautiful part about going through grief or touching grief is that there is this golden part of us that we just don't know is there well we do on, on one level but we're afraid to go through the pain of finding it mm -hmm. And, and going through the pain of finding this gold within us, this, this absolute, that grief and death and loss is actually part of an everyday thing that we have to deal with. I mean, just look at how the Indian culture deals with death. It's, it's every day and it's as, as normal as joy. Uh, and I, I really hope that we will get to a place where we integrate grief uh, from the outside you know bring it in bring it inside and, and really welcome it mm. and this is one of the reasons why i'm actually such a big fan of chinese medicine as a yeah. whole as well it is just that it's much more pragmatic about everything you know that there, there is no hiding from the dirt of life essentially that you know the dark bits it, it's all part of it and it's all taken as a whole straight away and, and again, through, through Chinese medicine, through Qigong, what I've found is that you can, without really having to think about it in a way that is threatening, this stuff will just come out. Because, you know, again, through the, the diagnosis that you, you use within traditional medicine, through Qigong practice, actually, you know, this stuff is there and it will be treated yeah. and you know so so in a way I find it less scary to work with it in Chinese medicine because yeah. it's going to come up anyway yeah <laughs> you know? totally and you know there's it, it does nourish our destiny I mean it's, yeah. it absolutely does it puts us back in line with our absolute self and how we deal with life and it is phenomenal medicine it, it, it really is and the choice I had was you know, antidepressants yeah. and and which dulls your emotions. Sure. Um, and you know, there's very little chance of me ever being able to really touch that grief yeah. with antidepressants. So you know, I'm not. I'm, there are people who need to be on them, obviously. But um, I do think for people who don't want to be on antidepressants but are struggling to find some way of dealing with this, I think Qigong and acupuncture work absolutely brilliantly together mm. uh, and really should be looked at. Yeah. So uh, tell me a little bit about what the, the differences are in traditional Chinese medicine that you practice and say acupuncture that uh, a Western professional such as a, a doctor or a physiotherapist might use as well because I, I know it's become very popular uh, in the last couple of years for, for doctors to be able to offer acupuncture, mm -hmm. uh, GPs I should uh, qualify on that. Um, 
So tell me a little bit about what the variance is in all yeah. of that. It's, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, to be honest. On one hand, I'm really pleased to see acupuncture being integrated into the Western profession. However, I'd be even more pleased if they were actually using the diagnostic skills behind it. So if they were actually using uh, a diagnosis of, of the whole body rather than just simply the pain. Mm -hmm. um, what we're seeing in the acupuncture community is that, um, that Western professionals are curious about acupuncture want to use it, have used it in pain clinics really successfully, um, and but it's being used linearly. Mm -hmm. So there are some acupuncture points that have an, a, a definite function. So for example, one acupuncture point on the hand, which is called large intestine four, is brilliant for clearing headaches. However, um, this is where the integral diagnostic um, is important, because if you have a patient who has, for example, loose bowels and a headache, perhaps the Western profession would use large intestinal four without actually thinking of the repercussions on how that would also work on their bowels because it does two things. So so it's it's really being sophisticated and clever in using acupuncture points. And I think this, um, I've got a headache, therefore I use large intestine four, is, is the linear Western approach. Yeah. So I, I really welcome any Western practitioner to, to use acupuncture, but perhaps to to do the diagnostic skills behind because it will it will really uh, consolidate and solidify the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of the, the, the actual style that's being used, um, the, the Western practitioners tend to use something called uh, trigger point acupuncture. In Chinese medicine, we call it ah shi. So it's like the Chinese used to go ah shi, which which translates as the painful good or the, <laughs> or the good hurt. Um, and it's it's running your fingers around the area that's that's painful and finding the points that are sore. So again, it's again it's not using the meridians as yeah. any intelligent um, source. You know, using the, the acupuncture points um, completely distally so that you clear the channel mm -hmm. rather like rather like clearing the Bakerloo line in London Underground you know you start with one station and it clears all the trains th through the through the through, through the station but it's um it tends to be um learned in a weekend mm -hmm. so uh, western practitioners can go and learn this dry needling technique in a weekend um they wouldn't let me go and do a weekend in brain surgery. Sure. <laughs> and, and actually, that, that's a beautiful comparison about the real complexity underneath Chinese medicine, isn't it? It's, it's not, it, it really, you know, and again, I, I've been looking at this now for, uh, well, 19 years. And, and it, all, all I know is, like you, I know less, you know, the, <laughs> yeah. the, the complexity and the interaction and the flow between different aspects, different layers, different levels, different parts of the system is is massively complex it is it yeah. is it, it's just not linear yeah. it, uh, and um, and i think it, because of that it it can't it can't help but treat the whole person uh, and a lot of my students you know i'll see them in the second year and they're so frustrated because they've now got another piece of information that adds on to another bit here but they haven't got the full picture sure. but there is an um, there is an aha moment where they get it um, and a lot of my clients say to me how can i learn about Chinese medicine, and the, there is really only one book uh, by Ted Kapchuk, which is the, the, the web that has no weaver. Every other acupuncture book on acupuncture is a textbook, which yes. is why it's so frustrating sure. to try and to try and understand how it works. Yeah. Um, but I really, you know, even if you don't want to be an acupuncturist, as a lens um, and a filter for seeing the world, Chinese medicine is just absolutely beautiful. It puts us back in touch with nature. Uh, it, you know, uh, learning about acupuncture, I just watched how plants moved in the, in the wind, you know, and kind of tried to um, work out how the Chinese even got to understand how a plant could move in the wind or how it, what it did in the sun and, and how, how they knew how that would help us on a medicinal basis. It's just profound. Yeah, sure. And, and that depth of knowledge is something that uh, uh, is really, really interesting to, to pay attention to. Uh, and again, I think that we've become so devoid from 
uh, nature in a lot of our, our health and the way we're looking at it, that we're, we're treating ourselves like cars, like mechanics, and, and again, that linear process, but actually we are these biological systems that cannot be separated from the environment that we're in and the culture that we're in and the relationships and all the rest of it. And to really look at health, we've got to have a system that uh, overtly declares that it will address all of this. Yes, absolutely. And part of the diagnostic skills is understanding how the environment um, behaves with us, how mm. we interact with it. For example, if you go walking, you know, and you have a, a diagnosis, for example, of being damp, mm -hmm. uh, and how this would manifest would be with swollen ankles or swollen knees. Mm -hmm. And it would just be like something like, you know, do you wear Wellington boots when you go walking? Mm -hmm. or, oh no, I, I wear sandals. You know, sure. it's, it's like the, the, the nature gets into us, the wind and the damp gets into us um, but it is understanding that we are you know we are part of nature yeah. and uh, everything about us is nature yeah. um, it's beautiful yeah. and it, one of the things I find really interesting is is uh, listening to people when they're talking about you know talking about the, the way that nature comes into us people that choose things like a raw food diet in winter mm. you know so cold damp yeah, food in winter yeah. Uh, and I see posts of, of Qigong practitioners who are practicing in wind and rain and snow outside. Yeah. And, and there's that part of me that is just like, okay, it's beautiful, but what's that real holistic understanding yeah. of all of yes. those factors and how they contribute into the body? Absolutely. I mean, we are just coming out of, of winter now, and uh, I, I was horrified a week ago to see my mum sucking into a plate of salad. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying, crikey, we need to be eating stews, you yeah. know, with, with, with good quality meat, yeah. and if not good quality protein, yeah. with beans, something that's easily digestible, yeah. something that doesn't put too much of a, a, a stress on our system. Yeah. And I, I do a lot of work with fertility, and just seeing what nature is doing gives me an indication of how fertile somebody is. And sure. over the Christmas period and winter period, it, there were very few people who fell pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, it's possible, of course, because we get pregnant all through the year. But people who are struggling to conceive, you know, winter is, is probably the hardest time. Come the first kind of shoots of spring, it, they're falling like whatever. You know, it, there's just sure. like... A, text after text saying I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, where the, the, the spring energy has just come through and because they've been resting and waiting for this spring energy, it really pulls them with it and I kind of love the analogy of kind of grabbing the, the dragon's tail through yeah. spring and just going with it and yeah. you know it is like the, the, the seven bore you yeah. know kind of waterboarding it is just kind of waiting for that surge yeah. and, and if you've spent the winter resting and eating well and trying to live you know going to bed early and getting up early qigong practice meditation and good nutrition going into the spring is just is just beautiful yeah. we we just i mean i think the winter is just um is just a lovely time but having christmas smack bang in the middle of the most <laughs> deepest darkest time of the year when we are nearly at hibernation and then yeah. ray party yeah. Yeah. it goes against the law of nature yeah um, and i i hear people complaining about it but because they haven't got the sense of what we should be doing with nature, they know it's wrong or yeah. it feels wrong, um, but don't quite know how to avoid it. Yeah, and of course the, the retail drive, you know, kind of yes. gets into everybody's systems, grabs their adrenals and drags them along. It's yes. almost like you don't get that choice to, yeah. to settle. You have to really reject it to, yes. to be yeah. able to be quiet. And mm. the look of horror on people's voices when I just say, you know, just avoid Christmas, yeah. don't, don't do it. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, what? Yeah. You know, and it's really possible to do it far more gently. Definitely. You know, it's really possible. And I think for people who are listening to this, you know, if you're interested in knowing how to do it more gently next year you know come and talk to us because you yeah. know we can really guide you to a very peaceful calm and restful christmas definitely and and for my own part i can really say that i did that this christmas and i i did no christmas things whatsoever and, and actually stepped way out of the space and just allowed myself to rest and take the time and came back in through the new year actually with a yeah. lot more stable energy yeah and that's absolutely really good. absolutely mm. so tell me a, a little bit about you know from your perspective how do you feel that acupuncture is actually working um 
Well, it's, it's, it's really interesting. I, I came to acupuncture really with both feet in an alternative lifestyle. You know, I, I rejected Western medicine on all levels, you know, and would not go near it, wouldn't even recommend integrating it with my practice. But um, through having a, a, a medical issue myself and realising that, you know, that people do need the help of the Western profession. They're really curious about it. They, they want to know how acupuncture works. works. Um, I kind of see acupuncture as, a, as a, um, almost a, a, an amazing uh, energetic uh, medicine. And it, it reminds me of people knowing that there was the speed of sound or the speed of light, you know, realising that that happened, but having no tools to measure it. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that that's where we are with acupuncture. We, we know it works. We know it has amazing results. How it works, we just don't have the tools to measure it yet. Um, the Western profession have gone so far as to kind of try and watch how the brain lights up if they use particular acupuncture points and of course there is that brilliant clip on YouTube of watching uh, someone having um, major surgery just with acupuncture as anaesthesia. Um, so there's, you know, that it has clearly a neurophysiological effect but on what level we still just don't know. Um, Certainly, it regulates hormones, and for women's menstrual cycles, uh, for well, for men, women in general, you know, managing our hormones, it just does it naturally and automatically. So, getting menstrual cycles back in routine, getting people ovulating again, helping women go into labour, it really affects us uh, on a on a on a, a massive level. So, so from a Chinese perspective, they've got it sussed. We we are we have chi we have blood we have special fluids and acupuncture moves them and makes sure that all the organs uh, which are responsible for these fluids are working the best they can um, and for example um, the, the lung energy um, is responsible for the emotion of grief yeah. so you know anything that I see in somebody who is grieving I will automatically look to the lungs mm. and every time we breathe in we're breathing in energy from the outside into our lungs and that moves straight down to the large intestine so we breathe in when we're born and we breathe out when we die it's um and hence why i think that the lung is associated with with the emotion of grief mm. um but it's basically about our chi moving mm. um yeah so so just for anybody that hasn't come across the concept of chi before how would yeah. you define that oh it's really hard <laughs> it's, sure, it's really it? it's really tough i think i think again because of the chinese language you know which has which encapsulates one word for a whole concept, which whereas our language just doesn't. There really is a mismatch in translation, and a lot of people use chi as body force or mm -hmm. spirit, and and it, it there just isn't a word that encapsulates it. You mm -hmm. know, it, in actual fact, the Chinese diagram probably encapsulates it far more visually than than the word, yeah. uh, which is that you know we we just have we just have this life force and. Yeah. I don't know, my dog died on Boxing Day, which was pretty rubbish, but I was there when he died, yeah. and, and, and watching him die was just incredible, because yeah. it, it happened so quickly, yeah. and just watching this, this body afterwards was just, um, and his spirit in between time, it was, it was just incredible, it was such a privilege to be there. Mm. Um, but I can't explain that, you know, but that's, it's like, that's our chi, it's, it's everything about us, it's, sure. it's, and it's everything around us. Yeah, and I think when you ask most people about whether or not they think there's something more to themselves than, than kind of meat, essentially, you know, there, there's, there's always that recognition that there is another aspect that isn't just mind, you know, that the is more than the, the nuts and bolts of, of joints and ligaments and organs, that there's something else in there. And, and for me, that, that essence of, of life, whatever it is, is, is kind of where chi is within yeah. the system. And that without it, we, we are just a cadaver, yeah. you know, and, yeah, and that's totally. that bit that animates us. Totally. Consciousness, isn't it? And yeah. even now the Western profession are realising that that doesn't happen in the brain. Yes. You know, it's, it's, uh, it, it is just everything about us, our life force and I I use those words lightly but that is probably the best yeah. um, description of us of it's what makes us us isn't yeah. it so, so tell me a little bit about what would uh, be taking place in a typical acupuncture session as well so 
there's so much going on in a, in a typical acupuncture session. So it's not just about what somebody is saying. Mm. Um, I am um, surreptitiously smelling. I am looking at the colour of their faces and looking for all sorts of the glint in their eye, the sparkle of the eye, just what their skin is doing, you know, just everything about them, colour, sound, odour, emotion, and what, how their voice sounds as well. So um, I'm looking at their tongue. So people will stick their tongue out to me and that will give me an indication of what's going on internally. One of the most beautiful ways of diagnosing is so simple, which is by temperature, mm -hmm. um, and that people run can run too hot and can run too cold. And this was something that the 16th century doctors realised as well. Um, and I think it's something that GPs still are in touch with but don't use very often, but it's, a, it's an amazing way to tell if somebody's um, at kilter. Um, I touch someone's pulse, so on each side of the wrist there are three major pulse positions which give me access to uh, two organs within the body. Um, the rate of the pulse, the, the quality of the pulse, how the pulse feels gives me information that coupled with the tongue and everything else that I'm looking at, I don't need someone to tell me really how unwell they are because mm. I can see it, touch it, feel it, smell it, see it. And, and the Chinese doctors who, who are working in multi-bed clinics over in China will just get someone to put their pulse out of a, a, a curtain and, and, and that's all they'll do is they'll feel their pulse and they'll do the treatment based on that. Yeah. I'm not at that level sure. by any stretch <laughs> working towards it. Um, but it's, 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 um, it's a, we're never taught how to touch things. Yeah. You know, and this pulse that we're taught, we're taught how to work with, it's just incredible. It's, it, for me, I found a way of communicating with somebody that suits me. Mm. Um, it, it's intuitive. I, I, it's touching the chi, touching the life force again. So it's, it's almost like sinking my fingers into someone's spirit yeah. and getting the feedback. Uh, and, and I have... I have felt uh, people's pulses and got such uh, strong feedback from them. And I do believe that we carry everything in, in our energetic field. Mm. Uh, and as, a, as an intuitive practitioner, we, we touch that and feel it. And that's what enables um, somebody who just puts in needles to, uh, to someone who actually works with someone on, a, on an energetic basis. There's a real difference. Anyone can put a needle in someone. Sure. It's, it's, it's how we deal with that person on a on a on an uh, unconscious level mm. um so i get a lot of feedback from the, the pulse so but i will ask lots of questions about um your sleep your digestion your elimination um your special senses uh if you were a female what your menstrual cycle is like uh, and there are kind of 10 questions that that encapsulate someone's health and depending on the answers will will guide me to a, a diagnosis of why you have this particular illness or, mm. or, or a disease symptom or what you're struggling with, basically. Mm. And um, and from that, uh, and there's always a lovely uh, aha moment of <laughs> great, this, this is what this person is. I then choose acupuncture points which will uh, complement what I'm trying to do on that day. So for women who are trying to get pregnant, I will um, stimulate their energy around ovulation and also heat them up, particularly in the second part of their menstrual cycle. For people who've got pain or fever, I will take heat away. Um, and for people who are deficient, I will, I will increase their energy. So by using uh, particular acupuncture points that do that. And then complement that with specific supplements or Chinese herbs or nutrition that um, will continue the healing while they're out of the treatment room. Mm. And, and that actual complement side of it is, you know, in my mind, is absolutely key to really get the most out of uh, what it is, A, that you've uncovered from the diagnostic work and B it's for me it's the deep buy-in by the mm -hmm. client to commit to creating a change yes. and and again is part of what really defines the difference between somebody who's just needling and somebody who is actually looking at you from a, a, a holistic and integral perspective. Why, why wouldn't I want someone to, to take control of their health you know mm. and and it, I think it's absolutely anyone's duty who's in the position like ourselves to educate somebody so that they start to realize 
just what their individual constitution is. And again, this is the most brilliant bit about Chinese medicine, is that the Chinese knew from an early age what their constitution was. You know, their restaurants are based on, you know, ordering food that clears phlegm or clears damp or tonifies their blood. You know, we're starting to see a bit of that over here, but it tends to be for Western uh, Western problems like um, diabetes sure. or um, anemia or something. So we're getting kind of restaurants which are catering for illnesses, which yeah. is brilliant. Um, however, to be told that um, your constitution for your life is that you are blood deficient or you have a damp issue or and you're told how to manage it, you know, you've got your recipe for, for longevity. Yeah. You know, you've got your recipe for, I avoid sugar things, I avoid alcohol, I avoid all of these things that will create this, this damp, which muzzes my head, gives me brain fog, causes me to be tired and grumpy. You know, why would I, why would I want to continue doing those things if I had those symptoms? Mm. Um, so, unfortunately, this is where the Western profession you know, they, their advice is broad stroke. You know, everybody has the same symptoms, but we don't, which is why some medicines work better for people, why some supplements work better for people. Um, you mentioned earlier about a raw food diet in winter, which is like everybody should avoid that, you know. Mm. There's just, unless you're in a hot, sunny climb. Mm. Um, and it's being able to be educated so that you know what best to do for yourself um, and give yourself control of your health. Yeah, and isn't it amazing that so, I mean, in my experience, there's so few people have a real recognition that part of the reason why the symptoms are there, part of the reason why the issues that they come with are there is because they caused them through the choices that they made unconsciously within diet and lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, that's just amazing when people start to, uh, to get to that point. So, uh, j just as a like a, a golden question, because it, it's you know I know that it's there for anybody that hasn't tried acupuncture. It's right there. Does it hurt? No. 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 There is a sensation which which is a which is the arshi sensation. It's the sure. good hurt. It's yeah. you know it's not like having an injection needle, which is huge. You know the the, the, the end of a, a needle that takes out blood or puts in uh, medicine is huge. The acupuncture needle is the width of a hair. Mm. You know, it's it's in so quickly, but you will get the chi sensation, which yeah. is, oh, and then it's gone. Yeah. And you'll know it's working then because there'll be a tingle. Sometimes there's redness around the spot, but it doesn't it doesn't hurt. Not like, not, not the fear of it. It's The fear sure. is worse than the reality. Sure. And, and I'm going to really concur with that as well. And, and although my, my very first experience of acupuncture, I have to say, wasn't very good. I don't think the, the practitioner who I saw uh, was particularly adept at that point and and I didn't really feel anything and it was just it was just uncomfortable it wasn't it wasn't what I considered a useful one but again the more that my qigong training went on the more that when a needle went in I could actually feel the whole pathway being activated so I could feel the whole meridian system and I could feel the change in the body and the actual sight of the needle was in a way uh, uh, immaterial it didn't matter because there was so much going on yeah. through the rest of my body with yeah. it yeah it's it's amazing for people who haven't had acupuncture before they will say oh I, I felt a sensation up here and completely away from where the needle was and actually they're describing the root of the meridian yeah um and um you know it's we we feel it but we we, we haven't got the education to know it so I love that. I kind of go, right, here's a diagram of just what happened, and this is the, the organs that are being affected. It's just brilliant. Yeah, I love it. Uh, so what kind of, uh, of people, you mentioned a little bit about fertility, but what kind of uh, health issues, what kind of things do you really like working with? What's your, your real, oh, I love to get my teeth into that <laughs> kind of stuff. What kind of fires you up in the day, excited to see these people? Oh, gosh, anybody who says they can't get over something sure they can't get well they can't get their stomach sorted they can't get their migraines sorted you know anyone who's that where they've tried you know so many things like going to the doctor and not had any joy and this woman came to me just five weeks ago um she couldn't stand up she did a lot of baking she loved walking she couldn't do any of these things and she handed me a piece of paper that said that they were going to operate on her hip mm. and uh and i was quite quite this is quite severe um Four treatments later, uh, and she did kind of ah she a lot through the treatments, but using a mixture of uh, cups, which is sliding cups, which really pull the skin up into the cups, 
uh, gua sha, which is rubbing the hip and the area, um, electroacupuncture, which is putting electro in, um, current through the needles, four treatments. She, she's, she's absolutely just I mean, a different woman. And I know that sounds like a, a really glib anecdote, but you know, this woman was potentially going for an operation to have sure. a hip replacement because of a musculoskeletal problem, sure. you know, where the assessment in the hospital was just like, well, it's obviously your hip, it isn't, um, and and she's doing everything that she wants again. So, but it doesn't matter. the The Chinese theory will will affect any Western diagnosis. So it applies to anything, uh, even the most weird things. I mean, obviously, I can't do anything with strabismus, which is you know, if when someone's eye moves into the centre of the, the eye, but sure. uh, because that is just a, a, a nerve thing. But um, most things can be treated with acupuncture. They just tend to take a bit longer. The, the, the way that we look at the body from a Western perspective is, is as an individual unit. Yeah. You know, you know, why isn't there a fertility um, expert tied up with a gynaecologist expert? Yeah. You know, when we're treating women, you know, it's just. And, and, but I appreciate we can't be an expert in everything, but sure. this is where you know acupuncture could really bridge that gap. Yeah. And and you're absolutely right about about um, nutritional uh, deficiencies. If you see somebody in the Western profession, uh, a nutritionist, um, they will just simply hand you a piece of paper that says fats, proteins, and carbs. Yeah, and sure. here's here's the order in which you eat them. Sure. Um, and there's there's actually no. Uh, understanding of the individual that they're speaking to sure. you know it's this broad stuff this is what you need to eat uh, and, and actually it's just well they're not licensed or uh, they, they can't give individual advice sure. um, but but understanding where a nutritional deficiency lies yeah. and you know all of the digestive pro- problems can can move away and again there's this um, this this trying to educate ourselves sometimes where we can cause more problems so you know there's a lot of talk about probiotics um and people ingesting them at uh, high levels but if the bad bacteria hasn't been gotten rid of you're simply you know adding more food for the bad bacteria sure um and it's this, I think sometimes to take control of our health, we need to come off the internet. Yes. <laughs> we sure. need to go and see a specialist yeah. in whatever area it is and let them guide us. And I think, I think you're with, people are with the wrong person if they're not sharing information. Yeah. You know, if they're just, you know, if they're not trying to get you well and trying to get you to take responsibility for your own health, then I would change practitioner. You need, you need someone who's working with you as an integrated relationship. Yeah, sure. It's funny sometimes seeing the response of clients when you actually say to them, okay, I'm going to suggest that you change this, you stop this, you add this, you, you know, begin doing this. Uh, and they go, well, what are we doing about my pain? And it's kind of like, here you go. <laughs> this is what you're doing about your pain. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. It's understanding what that causality is in the first place, what our behaviours are. And I mean, even with things like, as you say, the gut bacteria, one of the things we see uh, with epigenetics is that a lot of people will take a, like an off-the-shelf probiotic yeah. without understanding, yeah. well, what is the gut actually deficient with? And if we're putting in uh, a broad-spectrum probiotic, it may not contain any of the bacteria the gut actually needs. And all you're doing then is crowding out an already deficient system with something it doesn't need and just adding to the problems. So uh, as much as it's great for people to be taking responsibility for their health in that they're interested in it they also need good quality guidance yes, for it and absolutely. I think without seeing something somebody like yourself or myself yeah. within that that frame you know it's very difficult to do yeah, that effectively it is I think it's you know after seeing a professional then you know go for it and you know I think one of the things about um, certainly um, Chinese medicine is that I've had clients of you know 13 14 years who come back to me at the change of the season or when their issues starts again Mm -hmm. they come back quicker than they would have done normally I I can't count the amount of times someone says I just thought it would go away you know it it isn't you know but the thing is is it's taken probably months maybe years to get to that critical tipping point which people think it's just happened so when you say to somebody it's going to take probably 12 13 14 weeks of treatment to Mm. get this sorted it's like well it's only just happened surely it's it's easily mendable And, and you kind of can actually sometimes take it back on a timeline to that this event started 
probably in their teens, yeah. you know, when they were eating food that was nutritionally bad for them or were in uh, difficult relationships or were um, overstudying. You know, the, the event where that weakness started could have happened years and years ago. Yeah. And, well, I mean, I, I use the analogy a lot of a car with people that, you know, if you're driving it, then it will need servicing. Yeah. You know, it's as simple as that. And depending on the quality of the roads you're on and how you drive it, it's yeah. going to depend on what kind of problems arise in the vehicle how frequently and and so you're always going to need maintenance and the body is no different and yeah. like you I get that question of all the I, I don't understand I've been behaving this way for 40 years and this problem's only just shown up and it's like well yeah, you've probably had like 39 years of deterioration to the point where it's snapped and gone I can't do that anymore you've got exactly. to change this absolutely well you know I kind of think of this as, as my body is this amazing Ferrari yes you know, but when when I was vegetarian and partying you know, you know, I didn't realise that my my oil was just non-existent. Sure. You know, and I was parking it in the garage and then you know going out and driving it at ninety mile an hour in third gear. Yeah, so sure. you know, it, it's <laughs> you know, it's 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 kind of explaining to people so that they understand you know that that we can do something. And sometimes some of the changes are really quick. And then to actually say to somebody, here's your framework, here's your constitution. This is your life in food and the way that you lead it exercise wise or what have you and and that you know to be given your template for a good life which will see you hopefully symptom free yeah you know the the western profession just do not have this template for good health yes uh, they have a template for bad health yes but uh we don't have a template for good health and until we literally hit a wall figuratively uh, literally and figuratively but um, until we hit a wall with our health um, and start to look into it but you know I'm just saying to people as you do don't wait to hit that wall yeah absolutely and I think that's got to be one of the best pieces of advice we can uh, ever uh, give to to people is don't hit the wall uh, so Again, coming in from that, that point of view, why do you think people stop a treatment? You know, because uh, I, I really appreciate that, you know, Rome isn't built in a day and, and, and my body is a, uh, a very complex system. To, to expect a, a one-shot answer to something is, is pretty unreasonable. But what, what do you think is difficult for people with an acupuncture treatment? Um, generally, they. T I, I think generally that people can come to myself uh, and my colleagues as a last resort. Mm -hmm. um, so they're they're exhausted. They've tried everything. They're they're brow beaten, um, and they've had this issue for years. Mm -hmm. um, I I do also think that the way of managing people's expectations is really important as well. And going back to the the practitioner that just sticks needles in someone and doesn't talk about the person and then says, right, I'll see you next week, without offering any um, guidance or information, I think is, um, is, is really keeping um, someone in a state of ill health. Um, I think if you're a decent practitioner, you, you will be able to see how somebody has, has, um, has been treating themselves over the years. And one of the things that I think is really important is measuring success. Mm. So, you know, I will ask somebody out of 10 how bad their pain is and uh, how bad their sleep is or their digestion. It's amazing how three weeks later they'll forget that they said that their Isn't sleep was really bad. <laughs> yeah. And three weeks later I'll say, how are you sleeping? They'll say, really well. Yeah. But acupuncture hasn't done anything for my pain. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> and it's, it's almost like we're going through a system of uh, root and branch where, you know, the things that are very noticeable are changing, but that will change to the root cause ultimately but it will just take time mm. but I think managing people's expectations is is massive and educating all the way and, and that's always been my way of saying right we're in a we're in a partnership together I'm going to get you well trust me you know I'll ask you to do some things that you might not appreciate but you know and we will measure success mm. and you know if we really haven't got success after x amount of treatments then yeah I'll put my hand up and say but but what I'll also do is suggest other people. So, you know, I might say, look, I'm not getting anywhere with this person, which is rare, but maybe I need, you know, your skills or mm. somebody else's skills as yeah. well. So so not just thinking I can I can do it all. Yeah. It has to be an integrated solution. And sometimes, you know, that is necessary. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think it's, again, possibly one of the places where not enough practitioners 
do themselves credit is recognizing how many parts of the issue that's taking place with with that client are beyond the remit of the services they offer and who could really support yeah. that so we do you know full uh, integral um, aspects of that uh, you know which is really quite important um, so so, uh, now I understand as well that you are going to be doing some workshops here in Shropshire, uh, sort of uh, from around June time. Yes. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that as yeah. well? Well, it's, I think it's this whole passion of mine to get people to take care of their health. Mm -hmm. And if I can educate you on how to do that, um, then I think it's, it's, it's definitely worthwhile coming along. So I'm going to be running a day of how to self-diagnose uh, using some of the more easier concepts of Chinese medicine. So I will talk about the theory of Chinese medicine, but break it down into more easily digestible bits. Um, a bit of looking at tongues, a feeling of pulses, and just kind of realising the what signs and symptoms can indicate ill health. So it will be a really good, fun, interactive day of sticking tongues at each other um, and just talking about our own health so we get a sense of you know what is going on so it'll be a really supportive environment, but really some key things so that you can identify when you might be getting ill and what you can do about that. Mm, brilliant. We'll look forward to those and details for those will be on the website for Centre for Integral Health shortly. Uh, and also if people want to come and see you as private clients, tell me uh, where they can do that and how they can do that and where they can find more information about you. Oh, thanks, Ben. Well, I work here at the Integral um, Centre. I'm pretty flexible uh, in, in, in terms of times. Uh, and I also work um, at the Mayfair Centre in Church Stretton. Um, I have a website, uh, shropshireacupuncture.co.uk, um, where all my information is on there as well. Well, so yeah, kind of look me up. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be look, delighted to see you. Sure, and we'll make sure that there are links through to Amanda's profile page here at the Centre for Integral Health and her website in the description for this interview. So, uh, Amanda, thank you very much for, for coming you. along today and, oh, and talking to brilliant. me. It's just so lovely to meet someone so enthusiastic about it because it's it's just it, it it I feel so privileged yeah. and uh, and I want to share that and I think that's I think you know it's so important to do that. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much, Amanda. Thank you. And thank you everybody for listening along today. If you have any questions for myself or Amanda, get in contact with us uh, via the links below, and uh, I'll look forward to bringing you another installation of the uh, Life Force Patterning Integral Health Radio uh, in the near future. Take care. Have a great day.